can before this ball of energy, the ebullient, the scintillating <laughs> Sonia, Reverend Sonia, comes to speak to you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for that energy rousing introduction, Reverend Michael. Okay. I'm welcoming you all again to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living and let us give a rousing welcome also to those who are on the World Wide Web. I'm using technology this morning, other technology. This morning, I have chosen to use as the title of my talk, the gift that keeps on giving, why I love Jesus. We are days away from Christmas Day. The ev evidence of the season is all around us. The streets are busy, mm -hmm. some too busy. Some decorations are up, Christmas music fills the air. People are shopping and window shopping. There's a warm feeling of anticipation as some expect to have relatives and friends visit from overseas. And the temple singers are practicing to make this a special concert on December 21st. The most beautiful music could ever imagine. It is so haunting that when you're lying in your bed going to sleep, it's just reverberating in your, eh? When you go to bed. <laughs> Reverend John says, when you go to bed, yes. I must confess that I do have mixed feelings about the Christmas season. I love the fact of the tradition of music. I love the fellowship and acknowledgement of friendship and goodwill. On the other hand, I would rather stay away from the frenetic shopping pace, the ram-packed shops and traffic snarls. I guess you would too, yes. There are times when I would wish that the original intention of this period of the holy holiday would be placed foremost in our minds. When it would be a time when mankind would remember that at some undetermined time long ago, a precious gift was given to mankind. We would do well to remember the central figure around Christmas, which is Jesus. Jesus brought many gifts, most of all, in my opinion, his humanity. For me, it is through his humanity that his lessons and therefore his gifts are best understood. It is in reflecting on his humanity that I first came to love Jesus. In and through the example of his life, I can more clearly see the possibilities that lie ahead for me. Why do I love Jesus? Do I love him merely because he raised others from the dead? Remarkable as this is, others have done so too. Is it for his many miracles? There are many others who performed what we call miracles. Was it the size of the throngs which followed him around? Charismatic historical leaders have attracted even larger followings. Was it that he was crucified? There are easier ways to make a point. Was it that he raised himself <laughs> from the dead? Hmm. That's a point. No one else appears to have done this. But how does that translate into my life? Why then do I love Jesus? I love Jesus for his humanity. I love that he taught us by his words and examples how to fulfill the purpose of our own incarnation. To encourage us to reveal in ourselves the presence of the divine. Jesus taught us that we, like him, are expressions of the one power and the one presence, which has unconditionally given to humans the supreme gift of choice. Choice 
a conscious and deliberate direction of thought. And he showed us, by example, that we can and must use this gift of choice to think ourselves out of any self-imposed bondage. Jesus did not come to this life to be a conformist. He came to be what in today's worms, terms, worms, could be called a disruptor. When I was in boarding school, a disruptor would be one who was sent out of class to stand at the flagpole, who would get a detention and would have not so pleasant a comment placed on your end of term report. You notice I said your, I didn't say their. <laughs> the intention of the disruptive actions of the man Jesus was to reveal that man need not be bound by habits and traditions which has outworn its original purpose. Jesus had a particular contentious relationship with synagogue officials. He didn't say church, he said synagogue officials and outdated religious practices. He demonstrated repeatedly by his reprimands that our human instinctive desire to be acknowledged and praised for our good deeds may detract from the inner pleasure which comes when we allow good to express through us for its own sake. He made it clear that there, that we could get so caught up in the doing that we neglect to nurture the inner man. Most often, he demonstrated that man is not bound by precedence, that the only chain that binds us is a reluctance to imagine and an ability, inability to believe. Jesus did nothing significant without preceding it with prayer. And after any significant activity, he withdrew to be alone within himself in the stillness and to pray. I'm inviting you to join me in using the opportunity of this Christmas season to select one of the Gospels, read the words and actions of Jesus to gain a new personal insight into why this man from a tiny obscure village in a previously undeveloped part of the world should have become such a central figure in human history. Make it very personal to you as you look past the mythical Jesus to the personal message of the man of God. Dr. Ernest Holmes states, we are grateful to Jesus who stands at the pinnacle of human experience for lifting the veil of secrecy from the teachings of the mystical orders. This permitted all who had ears to hear to receive the message of the possibilities that lay ahead for the one who would put on the Christ consciousness. He taught volumes in few words, yet he said so much, using parables and rich metaphors to illustrate his messages. In my own reflections, it occurs to me that 2054 years have now passed since the year BC 34, in which Jesus is said to have been born. Everything has developed at lightning speed. Since then, the common modes of transportation have progressed from donkeys and camels to chariots and carts to boats and ships to motor vehicles to trains to airplanes to rockets and space stations. Communication has moved progressively through sending messages by couriers, by shouting across mountain tops, to Morse codes, to telegraph, cable, telephone, computer, internet. Medical and healthcare has led to the doubling of life expectancy. Babies are now being hatched in petri dishes. Animals have been cloned. The human genome has been decoded to the, ex to the extent that people can identify thousands of relatives from all over the world who they have never met. Then, guess what? Everything has changed. However, what has changed less is a pace at which humanity has come to accept and incorporate the significant and meaning, meaning of the life and gift, the gift of life which Jesus has expounded for us. 
as Jesus and so many other masters have brought to our attention. It is highly seductive to rely only on the hypnotic effect of praise and worship, to be bound by the need for rituals and by doctrine and dogma as the most important aspect of religious life. They have their place. However, this should not distract us to the extent that we may forget the true meaning behind the prophetic words of Jesus. I have come that he may have life and have it more abundantly. The gift of life comes with the gift of consciousness. Jesus taught us in words and by example how to use that consciousness as a gift to ourselves and by extension as a gift to others. Among the many lessons Jesus taught, of myself I do nothing, is the Father within that doeth the work. But whatever I can do, you can do likewise, and even greater things can you do if you believe in me. The kingdom of heaven is neither low here nor low there. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is within man. Among the most important prophetic words of Jesus, it is done unto you as you believe. To that belief, he added, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move. And guess what? It will. I have yet to see it, but I get the point. <laughs> How can we acquire these attributes? Not enough faith, Reverend John says. Jesus took great care to explain to us that what the nature of God is and our own connection to that nature. We have free will, but our free will lies in our choice of how we use our thought. This is the essence of the liberating gift that Jesus brought, and that is why I love Jesus. By accepting his gift and applying it to ourselves, we become the most precious gift of all, to our relatives, friends, associates, those who travel the spiritual pathway with us, and those who come in contact with us in any way. How many of us pray for relatives, friends, associates, and those who travel the spiritual pathway with us every day? Don't answer if you want, but think about it within yourself. Every single day, without fail, I pray for those persons, all of these, including my clients, right? I know those people who come into your life and come to, to help to, to be your successful in your business, you pray for them as well. And those who create order in the space that you occupy as your workplace, I know that if you would use this precious gift of your consciousness, generations to come will call you blessed. There's a Sir, sure, Chin Moy, um, who is an Eastern mystic, who made this very, very, very interesting statement, which I totally agree with. Yesterday I was clever. That is why I wanted to change the world. Today I'm wise, that is why I'm changing myself. I thought that was so appropriate because some of us spend so much time running around the place, guilty as charged, <laughs> trying to change the world, when in fact, by changing yourself, you are going to send out ripples, radiating ripples of consciousness across the world to bless it. By thinking consciously and deliberately, Thoughts of love, thinking deliberately thoughts of love and peace, we are changing. And as we are changing ever so steadily, we are contributing to the transformation of the pool of collective beliefs and actions of the peoples of the world. Every person who is willing to forgo the luxury of worry, scurry, this Christmas season and beyond is contributing to the evolution of the human race. What if we would spend a few precious moments in gratitude for this precious, beautiful planet on which we have been given a ride? What if we cast our thoughts beyond the borders of our gorgeous island to the peoples of the world and feel the warmth and compassion and brotherly love emanating from all people of goodwill and amplify it with the awareness that we are one with all? This could be our real Christmas gift that we give more valuable than anything we purchase with money. T.D. T. D. Jakes, a modern contemporary American preacher, urges us to give of ourselves. He says, you are a gift. He says, 
You cannot build from what you did, but from what you are. And I say you cannot build from what you buy, but from what you are. You are a gift. Unwrap it, he says. Rec he continues, recognize that you come from greatness for a special purpose. You have the seeds of greatness in you. And then he goes on to say you cannot be fruitful if you are, if you are not seedful. Peel back the layers and go to your core. Find out who you are. I say the power and presence of God the Christ. You cannot give what you do not know you have. As we become, and unquote, as we become familiar with our true nature, we become more seedful. You are enough. I am enough. Dr. Elma Lomzin's final words to Reverend John and I is find your point of peace and stay there. It is from that point of peace that we increase our awareness of the presence of God. And Dr. Ernest Holmes says, good presses upon you, love it. Allow it to reveal itself to you and through you. Enjoy it. As we celebrate another holy season, true inner joy is self-created. It does not depend on outer circumstances. This divine joy is the sole purpose of life, says Chinmoy, another ancient mystic. Then he goes on, be sincere in your thoughts. Be pure in your feelings. You will not have to run after happiness. Happiness will run after you. Wings on wings of joy find your path to inner peace. This is a joy that Jesus alluded to when he said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all things shall be added unto you. That is what Jesus indicated to us by precept and by example. As each of us grows and waxes strong in the spirit, as a child he just did so long ago, I am confident that day by day, moment by moment, the human race is moving towards the realization of Jesus' mission and the prophecy of peace on earth as predicted by the prophet Isaiah. Meanwhile, we need St. Paul's encouragement. Let that mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. The mind that sees I and I, and not just you and me, which knows that beneath the appearance of differences and separation, beneath potentially disquieting phenomena, there is one, one power, one presence, one life, one mind, overall, in all, and around all. The mind of love, peace, harmony, order, beauty, wisdom, and power, and anything you choose to call it into the beauty and goodness of your own consciousness. And at this time, words that struck me as truly prophetic, a time will come when we'll contribute to the coming which was prophesied in the words of Isaiah in chapter 2, verse 4. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword unto nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Dear fellow travelers on the spiritual path, we are the gift we bring to Christmas and beyond. As we shop, as we wrap our gifts, as we sing along with Christmas music, dine with family and friends. Let us remember always the inner man as reflected in this affirmative statement by our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes. It captures the essence of the message of the carpenter man, Jesus of Nazareth, who revealed the Christ. I live and move and have my being in the eternal presence of God. There is that within me which lovingly shares and expresses all that I have and that I am. I give thanks that unlimited measure of spiritual gifts is set in my heart, and I want you to say it with me. I live and move and have my being in the eternal presence of God. I live and move and have my being in the eternal presence of God. There is that within me which lovingly shares. There is that within me which lovingly shares and expresses all that I have and that I am and expresses all that I have and that I am. I give thanks that that unlimited measure of spiritual gifts is set in my heart. That thanks that unlimited measure of spiritual gifts is set in my heart. Friends, now you know why I love Jesus and more. There is so much more. 
And I know that that love which I have for Jesus is that love which is set in our hearts by that which created us out of itself. Jesus is a gift which keeps on giving. The Christ within us is a gift which keeps on giving. Keep on giving. I give to you and I receive your gifts. Namaste. <laughs>